to Fred in the Shed 2. Um, just another video um, on the 9900 again. Um, sorry for getting bored with these, but uh, this is what's sort of keeping me uh, in thought at the moment. Um, just going to do a couple of things with this radio this afternoon. Um, apologies to uh, anyone that's on the 305 net because it's actually going on right now. But I thought I'd take the time just to have a look at this radio. Um, one little update that I've done to this radio is that I've fitted proper 30 amp little uh, sort of connections on there that go on the back of the power supply. Um, someone did comment that my spade connectors that were fitted before were nowhere near sort of uh, strong enough. So I have actually uh, increased that now because we've got sort of 30 amp connections on there which uh, should cause make sure we don't get any problems with the uh, the power drawer so okay so issues that we've got with the 9900 at the moment is the um, the antenna plug the 259 the PL259 I think I called it a 959 <laughs> in the last video oh I don't know but uh, yeah the the plug here what, what had happened was was the sort of very long patch lead the mini 8 patch lead that I run to the shed shack um, up and up to the Antron the sort of thread on the uh, sort of plug on the 259 plug wasn't sort of doing up really really tight it was doing up and then there was still a little bit of playing it which I think uh, may have been a cause of my high SWR problem I'm not sure yet I've been on the radio twice since and I've run all sorts of power and it hasn't reoccurred but that's not to say that the antenna has not been blown about in the wind because at the moment the weather is very very calm and we've had two weeks of high winds so I won't really know for sure until the antenna gets blown about so um, basically what I was just going to do today is I've sort of I've got quite a few of these uh, 259 sort of plugs but I haven't I looked around I haven't got any new ones I've only sort of got recycled ones that I've used before so I have ordered a couple of new plugs from uh, Rocket Radio in Letchworth and they'll be here by the end of the, uh, the week, hopefully. Well, I've got this one here, this is a used one. I was just literally gonna put it on here for the first time and see how this one does up. Yeah, that's quite good. So that's just hand tight. I mean, I don't really wanna start using grips on it. As Robbie said, you shouldn't never have to do that, but that's done up hand tight. And that is pretty, I can turn down that with two feet, that's tight. So it does appear that the sort of uh, 259 that was on the end of that Mini 8 sort of patch lead, it does appear that uh, maybe the thread inside that isn't, uh, isn't particularly good and that's caused uh, the sort of issue there. Um, unfortunately everything's done to a price isn't it, even the, uh, the little two, the PL259s that I've ordered from Rocket Radio, you know they're all going to be sort of fairly cheap. Um, I don't suppose it matters really where you go. They're pretty much all going to sort of be the same. So we're going to order two new ones, so I stand a chance of getting one that uh, is okay. I might just put a tiny bit of sort of Vaseline just on the threads there, just to sort of make sure that when I tighten it up, everything sort of slides into place. So it's looking like it was it may have been a dodgy plug. As I say, not sure whether that's the real cause until the antenna gets blown about, and if it, if it goes again, it might be the bottom coil in the antenna. So that looks like we might, might be on the, uh, on the way to solving that problem and that's good. Now the next issue we had was um, the speaker was stopped working in, in the radio. I was getting headphones to work but basically when I sort of unplugged the headphones um, the speaker stopped working. Now I've had that issue before and this all comes down to me being bloody stupid when I was on the 305 once before with headphones on, the microphone sort of lead across my lap. And for some reason, I, I got up really, really quick. I don't know if someone come to the door or the dogs did something. It was, I don't know, it was some semi-emergency, I think. And I, I kind of got up, not, we were all for, completely forgetting and not, not realising that all this was draped across my lap. And I ended up dragging the radio off the side of the sofa and it bounced and dragged along the floor until um, I think it was the headphones sort of just basically pinged out of the back. Um, and that caused the audio issue before. And when I, that turned out to be the sort of internal plug on the motherboard had just been jolted off. And in fact, I've had a lot of problems since I bounced this across the floor. Um, I had no problems with it before. So I do not recommend that you bounce your radio across the floor. Um, absolutely 
don't recommend that. Anyway, I'm just going to plug this up to the power supply and have a look at the audio problem. I suspect that that lead may have come loose again, or it might even be the headphone jack that may have slightly opened up inside. So uh, anyway, that's going to be the next part. Right, so we've got, we've got the sort of br stack bracket stand off there. So I'm just going to double check the squelch is not switched on because it's a stupid thing, isn't it? But it's, these radios have got an automatic squelch. So if you turn it all the way down, the automatic squelch does cut in which uh, would cause the speaker, no, but it's, anyway, no, that's completely off. So I've, at the moment I've just got no, I've got no audio at all. So uh, I don't know how much you can see, how much, oh, I think you can see, okay. Let's take the, uh, so I've taken the top off. Oh, there we go. Can you hear that? I can hear it cutting out. Yeah, so straight away. So. Yeah, so once again, I don't know how much you can. I think you can just about see. So once again, it's this dodgy connector there on the motherboard where it's got sort of fractured if you like where it sort of got pulled off um, right here we are zoomed in a little bit and uh, this is the sort of speaker connection on the board there and it is very very loose so I think what I might have to do is I might have to super glue that in place and then if I need to separate the two radio, you know, the part radios apart. I might have to sort of desolder the speaker, but I shouldn't really ever have to take that top plate off. But as it is, so that is the problem. So I think it's time to just try and get a little bit of super glue in there and uh, see if that does the trick. What I did was there's like a little carrier that that kind of uh, sits, if you like, on the motherboard. And then the little thing plugs in and out of it, little socket. So that was really, really loose. I don't know if that at some point had been glued to the motherboard. So I just sort of removed that and I just pushed the sort of socket there straight down onto the motherboard. And it's gone on quite sort of tight without that in the way. Let me zoom in on Let me show you. Okay, so uh, yeah, so that, that actually goes straight onto the, uh, the sort of motherboard there without the need for that little sort of carrier socket. There you go. And that's really, really firm. So I think I might leave it like that. And as long as I don't sort of throw it about on the floor again, which I'm not intending to, I think that might be the answer. Save getting the, you know, if I do glue, if I do glue onto the circuit board, I don't know um, how that's going to sort of, if that's going to sort of damage any of the trace coating or something, or it might corrode through the sort of the, you know the top of the circuit board and maybe get onto the copper or something it's probably not recommended to use super glue straight onto a printed circuit board so i think for now i think we'll leave it as that put it all back together and uh, and see how we get on there we go the 9900 it lives another day back to uh back to sounding good um, so we, I think we'll leave, we'll leave it with that. We're going to say we've got a couple of these coming in by the end of the week to from Rocket Radio, and then I will uh, resolder one of these two five nines on the end of that eight mini eight patch lead. Um, I think a couple of people said, you know, is it possible that the mini eight patch lead could be in trouble? Could it have uh, been corroded inside? Has water got into it? I mean, that is possible. I know Gary had. Uh, an issue a few years ago with Mini 8. I know when he checked it, it all corroded up. But that particular run from the um, living room there into the shack is fairly fairly recent. I changed that last year because um, oh I can't. I think I, that was because I was having issues trying to use that Satagi 150 linear, and I think I changed that patch lead out from RG58 to Mini 8. So I don't think so. I don't, you know, I don't think it sort of needs changing. And uh, hopefully it's just a dodgy plug connection this time that's causing that uh, high SWR. And it's not the old Antron 99 that's going to live on. I do want to replace that, but I've got so much going on 
you know, with family and things at the moment. Um, it's not something I really want to do. But uh, anyway, hope you go. Just a Fred in the Shed 2 video, just to sort of keep you updated. As always, cheers. Thank you. Uh, thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, um, please can I encourage you to do so. Um, it hasn't got that many subscribers. We're over 600 now, which is good. But uh, it's always nice to get a sort of a few more. And uh, yeah, I've got a few, loads of other things to show you um, on Fred in the Shed 2. When I get round to it, I've, I'm, I want to start a build on a mammoth steam car. I've got a complete steam car kit to build. Um, every, you know, in just in a big box of sort of com components. I've been meaning to do that for weeks, but unfortunately it doesn't come with what I would say is comprehensive instructions. You just get an exploded view and uh, it does look a little bit sort of technical. So I've been sort of putting it off until I've had a sort of at least a few days to have a run in it. But that will come up. I will uh, choreograph that on Fred in the Shed 2. So you'll hopefully, uh, you know, see me build a quite a big, quite a big mammoth steam car. It's a Brooklyn's uh, Roadster. So that'll be coming up. But anyway, waffling on. As for now, cheers. Thanks for watching this on Fred in the Shed 2. Please look after yourselves, stay safe, and of course, I'll catch you all on the next one. Bye for now.